Hello everyone, uh, we will uh, continue with our discussion on neuro adaptive design. Last class we have seen one design which has appeared from Georgia Tech and uh, their colleagues and all that which is uh, compatible with the dynamic inversion design. And uh, as we, I, as I hinted in the last class, we also want to discuss something which is uh, little more generic in the sense it is not only compatible with uh, dynamic inversion design it is also compatible with uh, any other design. So, that is a that is a technique that uh, I mean uh, in a way I have proposed with my colleagues so some time back and then there are some uh, some revised versions and then there are some uh, I mean ramifications and all that we will see that some of these uh, as we go along actually. So, we will uh, we will still study this neuro adaptive design in the framework of uh, some sort of a generic uh, tool actually. So, motivation as we know perfect system modeling is difficult and the sources, sources of imperfection can, uh, can arise from unmodeled dynamics that is missing algebraic terms in the model, then inaccurate knowledge of the system parameters a change of, or it can also like a change of the system parameters or dynamics during the operation itself actually. We also know that in this adaptive control when you, when you talk about uh, then there are some black box uh, adaptive approaches do exist actually. That means, uh, the entire system dynamics uh, somebody can uh, think of uh, capturing it uh, through a net neural network if possible. And then we using those neural network model based on that you can think of synthesizing the control. That means, uh, the entire system model uh, there is no prior information actually you can uh, I mean the system is identified as you go along and uh, with that identified model you keep on uh, applying your control actually. But, the, but that uh, what happens is it take long time to adapt. And there is also chance of instability before adaptation because you, you are starting with uh, almost no information actually. Okay. And then uh, so what, what we really want at, at least a partial white box actually partial gray box or something what, you, what is uh, known as like whatever is in, whatever information is known to us we will uh, we'll take that and whatever is not known to us we will try to identify. That way it will lead to faster adaptation and the chance of instability is also minimal actually like before adaptation and all that. So, nominal control will have some robustness actually based, uh, based on the nominal model whatever you design control we will call that is nominal control and that uh, we are interested in improving its robustness actually that as you go along we will try to identify the unknown part and then use that unknown part for uh, updating the controller and all that actually. Okay. So, and the, as I told the adaptive design should be preferably compatible with any nominal design actually. Okay. So, reference uh, as, I, as I told largely this is from our own research team and uh, this was uh, reported in the journal of uh, IET control theory applications in 2007. I will roughly take you through a little earlier version on that and then towards end of this lecture I will tell you what, uh, what it actually exists in this paper actually. Okay. So, what is the simple example here that we are bothered about uh, partly I mean we are largely bothered about modeling inaccuracy. And one of the big reasons can be parameter inaccuracy actually. But what happens is let us say because of parameter inaccuracy you will be forced to uh, deal with some sort of a unknown function. It's, uh, so, even if you talk about a constant parameter number that, that number will throw some sort of a unknown, unknown function actually. So, let us see an example. Let us talk about let us say we have this x dot equal to 2 sin x that is a small system dynamics where 2 appears as something like a system parameter. But in reality, if it is really not 2 but 2.1, then we can write it this way. So, this is 2 sin x plus 0.1 sin x uh, sort of thing. So, this 0.1 sin x is unknown part because whether it is plus, plus 0.1 or minus 0.1 or plus 0.2, we do not know about that actually. So, this entire part becomes some sort of unknown actually. So, what is the approach here? Let us say for some reason we can uh, we can approximate this as uh, something like 2 sin x plus some delta c uh, coefficient actually unknown coefficient times sin x. That means, uh, this uh, this sin x part uh, appears some sort of a basis function and this delta c appears some sort of a weight actually. So, our objective here should be like can we do something so that the delta c will approach to this point 0.1 in this case or if it is minus point 0.1 it will go to minus point 0.1 in that case. So, whatever is that unknown component the delta c will go there actually in an adaptive manner actually that way. All right. So, objective here is to increase the robustness of the nominal controller with respect to parameter and error modeling inaccuracies which uh, essentially leads to the imperfection in the system model as I discussed here. 
So, let us see what to, what uh, what we do and what is the objective in little more mathematical sense actually. So, what we are assuming here is the the desired dynamics is all already known to us in the form of a nominal control design. So, that subscript D stands for some sort of a desired objective and things like that. So, essentially this part of the system dynamics we already know and using the system dynamics we have already designed a controller for whatever objective we want to achieve actually. That means, U D is also available for us for further adaptive control design. Okay. So, you, so what you are assuming here is the not only the dynamics is known, but we have already designed some sort of a nominal controller assume, I mean with the help of that model that we already know actually. Okay. However, this model is not known to us exactly, I mean this model does not represent the actual system exactly. So, that means, the actual plant can have some sort of a uncertainty which we are representing as some d of x actually. D stands for some like disturbance and all that, but in general it is the kind of unknown part of it actually. Okay. So, what you what you are telling here this particular system dynamics the behavior of this is going to be, be different from what we think it should behave, because this is our perception actually that nominal control part of it. So, it is supposed to behave differently, because uh, this part is unknown as long as this is non-zero this dynamics is different actually. actually. So, what is our objective? Objective here is uh, nothing but this particular x, the, uh, the states of the actual system should go to the states of the desired system actually. Okay. So, that should simply like tra track this. That means, we know that the, the objective is met by, by x d already, okay. because we have designed a u d by, by that time actually. So, ob obviously, the, the x d as it appears has satisfied all the, all the necessary things. So, that means, x d is a good fellow to, to track actually that way. So, that means, uh, our objective should be like x should go to x t as soon as possible, because there onwards it will track to it will follow x t anyway actually that way. So, all the time we are in, we are interested in simply ensuring that x should go to x t as soon as possible actually that that is all. But the problem here is because x dot contains d of x and we do not know that. So, whole idea is can we approximate that, that means we use this neural network or something some function approximation tool to approximate that. But because this approximation can never be exact, so this dynamics with the approximation, uh, let us say I talk that as d hat of x. So, with the approximation of d x as d hat of x, this dynamics is again going to be different actually. So, that is that is why we need to denote it as something else, some other state actually. So, that is what I call x a, that means uh, this is like approximate system dynamics actually. So, if you, if you see this d is replaced by d hat, which is neural network, I mean ideally speaking this is supposed to be neural network approximation of d x d x actually. And this uh, this term is uh, added later, I mean the this is a, this additional term with uh, with k being a positive definite matrix is needed for ensuring better bound and all that actually, later we will see that how it helps us actually. So, what is our strategy? I mean objective is that x should go to x d. Okay, because x because x dot is not known to us completely, we will not be able to do directly. So, what you are telling here is uh, x should go to x a first and x a should go to x t, because x a dot is known to us completely actually, because this, this dynamics is nothing unknown to us, because d a t is something that we are computing actually. So, uh, whatever is x actually, whatever x comes up uh, in the reality. Okay. So, x should go to uh, x a okay, and x a should go to x t. So, so, essentially we are having this uh, these two loops now, one one you have to ensure that this loop is satisfied that means, x should go to x a, then the we also should simultaneously make sure that this loop is satisfied that means, x a should go to x t actually. So, that is the, so these two loops we will we will uh, we'll study actually. Now, also also just to make a point here that uh, uh, as, as soon as x goes to x a, okay, as soon as x goes to x a this term is 0 anyway. Okay, so, if that term is 0, then d, d is nothing but d hat of x, that is the way we will identify that. If everything happens properly, then uh, x should go to x a very close at least, I mean very closely at least and in that sense, this d should go to d hat actually. Okay, so, that is our objective anyway. So, we have to assure, I mean two loops we have to assure, okay, first we have to assure that x a should go to x t and then simultaneously x should go to x a and all that. So, we will discuss these two loops one by one. Let us first discuss so that somehow we x has gone to x a then how we will ensure that x a should go to x t and after that actually. Also remember that we are not assuming anything like uh, uh, like square system and things like that, that means this dimension of x and u can be different really. So, that uh, that brings in a lot of additional difficulty actually. 
All right. So, now let us let us assume that x i is known to us and we to just assure that x i should go to x t. So, let us try to kind of enforce some sort of a desired dynamics like the way that we do in in dynamic inversion. So, we we define E d error error actually. So, x i minus x t and enforce E d dot plus k E d equal to 0. So, if you enforce that then x i, x i dot minus x t dot and all that you can I mean this E d dot is x i dot minus x t dot and x i dot is known to known to you x t dot is also known to us actually. Okay. So, that uh, we substitute all that and then try to solve it uh, as much as we can try to simplify actually. That means, uh, we, so remember this u d is already available to us. So, that we can use it actually. Okay. So, that means, you, you put everything in the right hand side, but you leave it like f of x u. The, so, this equation if I define this entire term whatever happens in the right hand side as something like h of x x all that actually. So, they will end up with some sort of a equation like this. So, if we can solve this equation, then we are done actually. So, until now there is no approximation nothing there and all that. So, if, if you can solve this equation exactly, that means, this equation is satisfied exactly and hence x s would go to x t and all that actually. Now, the thing is can we really do that and then it arises as I told this there is a dimensional incompatibility and all that means, in general the number of equations and number of variables are not same actually. And here is a case of over constraint problem that means, the, the number of equations are really no, no, dimension of f, dimension of f is n and the variables that you are talking about is u actually. So, it is not really an under constraint problem, it is in general it is a over constraint problem actually. So, let us try to see, see a simplified case where you think ok let us uh, discuss case by case. Uh, so, we discuss number of control is equal to number of states in that sense what happens it is a very trivial case or I mean very uh, unrealistic case rather I mean, it will most likely it may not happen. But let us say in some problem it happens, we have sufficient uh, control x and available. So, 3 x is stabilization 3 I mean uh, 3 control and all that actually you can see that. So, if it happens like that which is again this is very rare, but still if it happens and it is also control affine that means, the, the system dynamics is control affine okay. and remember in general we are not even assuming that. So, it we are talking about like nonlinear uh, non affine and uh, in general nonlinear systems and all that actually. So, we, we are not talking that assumption either, but you can still introduce that assumption here that means, the system dynamics is control affine and number of control is equal to number of states that then we can write the above equation here something like this. And in that in, in this particular case it is like because of this assumption this, this is a kind of equality constraint. So, we will be able to solve this control as something like this provided g of x is never singular actually. Okay. So, if a g of x happens to be singular somewhere on the way then uh, the same regular problem as what we had in dynamic inversion actually. Okay. So, we have to take some precautions for that. Okay. Now, let us relax this assumption one by one. So, that means, first we will relax this affine system assumption actually that means, in general the system dynamics can be like that. Then somebody can think of using numerical method something like Newton Robson technique. Okay. I mean you can, it, is, it may still be possible to solve it in a closed form form uh, even though it is a nonlinear function like this provided you know what is the function uh, that depends system dynamics to system dynamics. For example, if it is sin x uh, sin of u is something there then u is sin inverse of that I mean that that particular thing is still a closed form solution, but uh, we will not be able to talk more because we do not know the general form of this function uh, unless we know a particular system dynamics. So, in general somebody can think of using numerical method and uh, it turns out that Newton Robson technique has quadratic convergence and it actually converges very fast. And it also has some uh, the good thing about it is uh, the adaptive control if you see that it all depends on how big is this d of x. And if your nominal system dynamics is fairly good enough that means, the accuracy part is uh, fairly good here. Uh, inaccuracy is there, but it is not really a very bad inaccuracy. I mean, uh, maybe 10 20 percent inaccuracy here, or something like that, part of the system dynamics. Then, then it so happens that your u of u will not be very different from u d either, because the system dynamics are not very different. So, that means you can think of a guessing a value for u as u d, so that you are already have a good guess actually. So, not only the Newton Robson technique converges fast, you also start with a very good guess actually. Okay, so, that way it is even faster. All right, so that is the way to talk about this non-affine problem. What about this uh, this generic case where you have number of controls less than number of states, which is very general. I mean, in general, that is the case actually. Then what you have to do is there is the idea of uh, let's say we we think of something like add and subtract uh, operation here. 
So, what we do here is uh, we go back to this x i dynamics x i dot dynamics actually here and then in that dynamics we want to add and subtract this this term actually. Let us say psi of x times u s minus I mean I subtract and then add it up and then what you think of is this particular thing what you are seeing here is something like d a hat of x ok. That so, and so what happens here this x a dot I will not be able to kind of uh, identify d hat actually I will be able to identify the entire thing together basically ok. So, by, by doing this addition and subtraction what, what I am doing here is I am introducing free more free variables here and that is what I uh, we interpret that as pseudo control actually. But this pseudo control remember is very different from what pseudo control we discussed in the last class. Actually. So, that, that, that pseudo control is in the, in the setting of dynamic inversion and all that. Here is just an artificial variable that we simply call a pseudo control because it is like a control variable actually okay, some, some sort of a free variable here. So, you modify the system dynamics in such a way that if you take u and u s together this u and u s together then it is the same dimension as number of I mean the dimension of state actually. Okay. So, u is uh, let us say x is n dimension, u is m dimension and u s is n minus m dimension is it to add it in such a way that u and u s will be uh, like if I put them uh, below ok, if I put u, u and u s as partition vector sort of thing ok. So, that that v whatever v I am talking about this is same dimension as uh, x actually. So, that means this equation that we are talking here is still number same as number of variables and number of equations actually this particular equation here. So, let us uh, in general again somebody can think of solving for u now u and u s together you solve for u and u s together. So, if, if it happens to be control affine again then again I, I can write it there like that and I can uh, separate this out and put them together and things like that. So, u and u s I will define at v now this equation will have number of uh, equations equal to number of, number of uh, free variables. So, I will be able to solve for v. So, once I solve for v I know u actually. So, u is the inverse of that. So, the so, the I mean there is a little bit uh, tuning requirement here because the entire solution will now depend not only on the gain selections and all it will also depend on what function you select here. Uh, later I will give example where this fun this form is not that difficult it turns out uh, because whatever experiment we have done normally this i of x turns out to be just a constant matrix sort of thing uh, with that we will be able to get some solution. But in general that what is the optimum value of psi of x I think that is still an open question actually. Okay, so, how, how do you select that okay. anyway what you are now we are not interested in a, an optimum solution let us say, but we are interested in at least a solution. Okay. So, in that setting in that say in that set of the solution is ready actually in that, that way. So, once you get a solution for v we will extract u from v okay. that first m first m elements is nothing but u actually. Okay. So, for simplicity we will not consider the special case for further discussion and all obviously that is a requirement and there are uh, I will give an example of course and then um, proceed further with that actually. All right. So, what is the what about the next step? So, we, we have ensured that uh, that that is ok now we have to ensure that should also happen actually simultaneously. So, for that uh, we will define some error uh, error term again x minus x a and this time we will take the help of uh, Lyapunov theory actually. So, if, if x minus x a then the ith channel again like last class we will not discuss in the entire state vector and all let us pick out the ith channel dynamics which is x i dot is like that and this is this is the original uh, dynamics uh, with unknown terms and all. So, x a x a i dot uh, the ith component of the approximate dynamics is, is like this provided the I mean we are also assuming that this gain matrix k a is also diagonal and all that actually. So, that with the with the diagonal element of k a. I mean if the if k a is selected as a diagonal matrix here sorry here and then we'll, uh, this term is also like k i e i e i actually. Okay. So, e i is defined x minus x a e i is like that. So, with that ith component will turn out to be like that actually. So, Lyapunov theory before using Lyapunov theory we have to we have to know this e i dot so the error dynamics of that what you whatever dynamics you are talking about. So, e i dot by definition is x i dot minus x a i dot and x i dot is available now x a, x a i dot is also available here. So, we substitute all that and then try to simplify it and then tell ok my error dynamics turns out to be a function of error in the weight ok error w tilde w tilde is like w minus w head exactly like what we discussed in the last class actually 
Okay, so there is an ideal uh, weight which I'll call that is W. Instead, of, uh, we are not discussing like W star and all that. I mean, W is ideal weight for us, and W hat is uh, is the actual weight sort of thing. So then you can uh, put that all that, and these two terms can be combined. Okay, and I can uh, so I can write it this this system dynamics. This is all with the assumption that uh, the, this ideal uh, neural network. Uh, I mean, representation is like that. Di the the error actual error can be represented something like that with epsilon i as error quantity error ideal approximation error, and the actual neural network is represented by W hat transpose times phi of x actually. Okay, so with that, uh, by the way, all these phi are uh, same phi actually. There is, there is no difference actually here. So probably this is a small mistake here. This okay. So these are this phi is uh, I mean uh, what you are using in the left hand side and right hand side. This phi is same as that phi actually. Okay. All right. So with that, uh, this is what is happening. Now we to we to can select a Lyapunov function candidate. So let's select that. So this is we want to have error minimum and then the weight also should remain bounded and all that actually. So we'll take this uh, Lyapunov function candidate where p and gamma are tuning parameters. Both are selected as positive quantity. Then you take the derivative of that. This particular uh, ith channel Lyapunov candidate derivative. Then you uh, substitute e i dot whatever you have here and all, and then tell okay exactly proceeding before and all that. This is something like uh, w i tilde. Remember w i tilde is w i minus w hat, where w i is a constant number. So w i tilde dot is nothing but negative of w i hat dot. So using all that, uh, this uh, this simplicity can be brought in, and then w tilde transpose and w tilde transpose happens uh, both sides, and these are scalar quantity. Remember that. So I can take it on the I mean inside actually. So W i tilde transpose I have a common term and this is what is what I am left out. So this W i tilde I mean this coefficient thing okay, is, is enforced to 0 like last class because uh, this particular thing we do not know actually okay. because W i tilde is W i this, this ideal weight is something that we never know. So, because of that this difficulty arises, so we cannot talk about whether it is positive negative all that. So, all that what you do is the coefficient let us enforce is to 0 and once you, the, once you enforce the coefficient to 0, it also gives us a weight update rule w i hat dot is equal to like this actually. Okay. So, then this, uh, this Lyapunov function uh, candidate we still have to analyze because it is uh, we have just ensured that one term is 0, we still left out, we are still left out with that. So that is that means the, the li dot is happens to be like this, and this is strictly negative, provided this condition happens. I mean that's easy to verify actually. If you if you can uh, if you think a little bit on that, when it will happen? When when is this li dot uh, less than zero? That's the question, right? So you you simplify that and try to take some terms in the left hand side, right hand side, all that, and it turns out that if you, I mean. Uh, if this condition is satisfied, then L i dot is negative. That means as long as this E i dot is, is epsilon i is the, the neural network approximation error in the in, I mean in the ideal neural network sense actually. So that that is anyway small already. Okay, and then this is we don't have to really live with that. We are, we also have a little bit tuning on that. That means we are, we can talk about even reducing that further. So that means uh, modulus of epsilon i divided by k i and remember k i is a positive quantity. So, you select this k i sorry as a tuning requirement you select this k i I mean any way positive quantity, but I will strongly recommend that you select greater than 1 actually. If you select greater than 1 this quantity is uh, further shrinked actually like epsilon i quantity whatever you have divided by some, some number which is greater than 1. That means that that quantity that you have in the right hand side is further shrink actually. Okay, but also have a question that you cannot keep on increasing forever. I mean that if you do that, then if you see your system dynamics out here, this is actually some sort of a, I mean high gain problem will start appearing actually. Okay, so if you will have a very high gain and all that, don't try to be make it uh, I mean infinity sort of thing. And then then this dynamics will is going to go unstable actually. Okay, so we have to be slightly slightly careful about that actually. Anyway, so again, we what we'll end up with uh, the system is practically stable. That means uh, we are we'll be able to reduce it almost to very close to zero. But uh, theoretically speaking, we cannot claim that it is asymptotically stable. 
Okay, so that is that's the difficulty. But the results also that they are actually like the result sense it's almost close to asymptotic stable behavior actually. All right. So uh, summary sense, uh, what you really need to do in implementation. Uh, remember, adaptive control things are uh, rather easy to implement and all. So first of all, we will initialize the weights to zero. Okay, and then this is the weight update rule available to us, where A i is something that needs to be computed that way. And remember, this in general, this x i is supposed to come from sensors and filters. We are not supposed to do this uh, this system dynamics propagation. But in numerical experiments to verify our ideas and all, we will assume that there is some, some, I mean some, some sort of a function and that function will be used only here, nowhere else actually. Okay, if you use that function here and just simply integrate in the, in the background, whatever uh, value comes out, that is something that we will assume that is coming out from the sensor actually. Okay, so, with that, uh, uh, what you really need to do is the compute AI is something like this. And gamma and p are, are the tuning quantities anyway, so those have to be selected properly. And remember, gamma is supposed to be a large quantity compared to p, okay, because you see ultimately, if you if you see here, this term should have lesser uh, weightage compared to this term. That's our objective actually. So, uh, I mean, the both are there in uh, together anyway, but uh, given a relative weightage sense, this quantity should have, should be much lesser weightage compared to this because our my primary objective is to minimize this EAI basically. So, I select a high gamma then this term will be reduced actually that way. All right. So, this is uh, so that is ok I select a um, initial weight as 0 and then uh, this is my weight update rule available to me where phi i is the basis function that we have to select ok a number of basis functions and all are also dependent on the problem actually. And then uh, EI is something available to us through this operation actually. So, once you have this at any point of time we have a value for w hat t and using that w hat t we will be able to compute or estimate this d hat of x. This is our estimation of d hat d, d of x actually. So, w i t is available from integration of this equation and then d hat of x can be computed that way. Once it is there available to us. Then okay, we have to I mean to implement I mean to compute the control end of those formulas we have already discussed actually. How do you compute your uh, like u out of uh, I mean that uh, that formulas and all okay this this kind of things okay. Either you compute this way or you compute that way and things like that. So those things are available to us. On the way we have to actually propagate this histodynamics equation. So we have to have desired dynamics, the actual plant, and then like uh, approximate system uh, dynamics and things like that we need to keep on propagating. So, in implementation we are supposed to propagate this equation and this equation to get a x d of t and in reality x of t should be available from sensors and filter, but for numerical experiment you can you can think of propagating this equation with some sort of a some sort of an assumption of d x actually. And for initial condition, all these initial conditions should be preferably same because that is where you start your adaptive control actually. Okay. And control formula calculation formula is uh, I have already given that before. Okay. So that is the way to implement the control. So, I mean it is a integration of a bunch of differential equation including the weight it is they are all uh, integrated forward in time actually. This is nothing like, uh, like back and forth integration and all that. These are all uh, one time integration starting from T0 actually. So, that is why it is uh, easy for implementation, that is why it is also computationally in no issues at all actually. Little bit examples before you proceed further. So, the first is a motivating scalar problem, and this is a very small scalar problem where x is uh, x and u are both scalars. And if suppose this is the system dynamics that is given to us, but in general, let us say this d of x uh, contains a term like some sort of a sinusoidal sinusoidal term. Remember, this term is unknown to us, so we will not be able to assume anything anywhere other than integrating this equation. I mean, just for numerical validation, actually. So again, go through the problem objectives and all. You can tell okay, first you have to design a UD. So for designing a UD, we'll tell the, okay we want a kind of a stabilizing controller. So x d should go to zero. And then after this designing of u d, we have an objective for x with that x should go to x t that is all actually. Okay. And the objective of x should go to x t, I mean the objective of x going to x d should be achieved much faster than x t going to 0 obviously. Okay. So, picturally speaking I mean this is uh, something like this suppose you have this t and there is some x d, uh, I mean some x d going on actually there so, that is our x d actually. 
okay, I do not know. Okay. Then if I have some, some x somewhere, okay, then x should go all to that one very fast actually. Okay. After that it should after that it will develop along with that. Okay, first so as far as x is concerned, this is our x actually, this is x of t. So x d should go to 0. But x should go to x d and x d is anyway going to 0. So, x will also go to 0 later actually okay, that way. Okay. Anyway, so this is what will, what will happen there and then, uh, uh, then using the so for checking this uh, control validation and all we will still use the dynamic inversion sort of philosophy for designing U d. So, you assume that error dynamics to be like this and nominal control happens to be like that. We have discussed this example in the, in the dynamic inversion lecture also basically. So, uh, so U D turns out to be something like this and adaptive control uh, if you go through all that theory that we discussed before it, it will turn out to be like that where D hat has to be evaluated actually I mean that has, that needs to be estimated first. So, design parameter is selected is something like that remember again gamma is much larger than P remember that. So, that is why the, the error in weight is, is less penalized actually compared to other one and phi of x we selected something like a power series term. Okay, x x square x q and all that and 3 basis functions only. So, um, that is sufficient for us in general actually. So, if you see this I mean there is a little bit interesting thing here if you if you just simply use this adaptive control formula okay, in the real system you can very clearly show that this uh, system dynamics will uh, will have something like uh, uh, something like a multiple uh, uh, equilibrium point actually. Okay, so, you can I mean I will not go through that, but I will encourage you to do that yourself probably. Then if you, if you simply use the adapt, I mean the problem is if you uh, simply use the nominal controller formula which is like this here and do not do any adaptation actually. Okay. Then because of the sin pi, pi by x sin pi x by 2 okay, that term is here in the system dynamics you will not be able to do a perfect job. So, that means uh, this system dynamics equilibrium sense. Okay, you will be land I mean you will have 3 equilibrium points actually. So, one is 0 equilibrium point, one is 1 and another one will be minus 1 also. So, then it turns out that if you start anywhere between plus and minus 1 okay, then you will go to 0, but if you start anywhere outside plus or minus 1 then you are supposed to be trapped at 1 actually. Okay. So, if you start beyond plus 1 then you will uh, you will stabilize at plus 1, if you start uh, beyond minus 1 in the other side then you will get trapped in the minus 1. So, you will not be go able to go to 0 actually really. Okay. So, now if you really want to go to 0 apply the adaptive control. So, all that it will do is uh, it will behave as if it is a nominal system dynamics actually. Okay. With, so, what I mean the entire philosophy is we modify the controller in such a way that the states of the actual system behave like the state of the nominal system. Okay. So, because nominal system is anywhere there. So, that that, that, uh, that problem has, is not there here. So, it will simply cast its hands the nominal controller will ensure that the actual states should follow like a nominal state actually. So, it will never get trapped here it will go to 0 actually. Okay. So, and also you can see that the control dip I mean the difference of control is also there actually. Okay. So, I mean the dip if you see this uh, the like this is your uh, adaptive control for the actual system that means this is this is the actual adaptive control that you are applying here. Okay. Otherwise, what will apply is if you simply rely on the nominal controller, then you supply simply apply this controller okay, and with that you will be able to get trapped here actually. Okay. So, that is also very obviously not a good thing to have. Unknown function identification sense remember we are doing that d hat should go to d. So, that is an another validation part of it. So, whether d hat is actually going to d or not actually. So, that way this is uh, what is plotted here. Because d x I mean this numerical exercise we know d of x, so we can plot that okay. and then we can plot uh, d hat uh, as it is computed from the system I mean from the formula that we have actually the w, w hat transpose phi of x actually. So, that is where you can validate actually okay. So, all right. So, this is a small problem, but what about a larger problem actually. So, we will take another benchmark problem which is like a double inverted pendulum and all that. So, this is this system I mean this problem is like that two inverted pendulums connected by a spring let us say both will oscillate. Now, we will apply this uh, controllers u 1 and u 2 which are nothing but torques out there okay, in harmony in such, such that, that they will stabilize actually. Okay. So, can we do that? 
and the nominal plant equation these are all like remember second order systems and you have only one one control actually. So, you have you will end up with a fourth order system dynamics with only two control actions u 1 and u 2. So, this is actually a, a system dynamics where number of states are e not equal to number of control. In reality it is also a non affine system because 10 hyperbolic u appears. So, control does not really appear in a uh, affine form. But I mean somebody can always argue that 10 h of okay, if this is the case then I will uh, I will assume that uh, this particular is like something like v 1 and this particular is something like v 2. So, at least in v 1 and v 2 it is control affine. So, that uh, that problem is not uh, that severe here actually. But still, uh, so what you are assuming here is let us assume that this alpha 1 and alpha 2 which are parameters were inaccurate with delta alpha 1 and delta alpha 2. So, these values are not known to us and we also remember this entire design is not only parameter inaccuracy, they are also talking like inaccuracy in the system dynamics itself. So, that means we let us assume that we also have this inaccuracy in the system dynamics itself and these inaccuracies are actually punishing because these are uh, exponential terms actually. So, if your adaptive control is not good then these terms will actually take you away very fast actually that these are destabilizing exponential terms. So, in this system dynamic parameters and all that uh, are given here they are actually taken from a reference actually and the alpha i beta is and all they are defined like that way. So, that the system dynamics appears uh, in a little benign form actually. So, this alpha 1, alpha 2 and all that are not arbitrarily selected they, they have this system dynamics meaning actually these are related to system parameters really ok. All right. So, these are like what we are assumed is like some delta alpha 1, delta alpha 2 can be 20 percent of and this uh, all this uh, exponential function k m 1 a 1 and all that those those coefficients are also some uh, I mean some values like this actually ok. Control design parameters are all uh, like these are typically selected uh, by use I mean trial and error sort of thing, but if you as you keep working on any problem you will gain, gain more and more experience also. So, that means one or two problems if you solve the third problem will not appear that that difficult actually ok anyway. And here I will also think that ok while designing this uh, this uh, basis functions we have become slightly more uh, kind of uh, uh, let us say smart or something. So, why because uh, this is the particular sort of basis function if you see these are coming from Taylor series expansion actually ok. So, if you see this uh, this uh, exponential term and all that if I if I expand this e to the power anything that it will throw me some sort of exponential series actually. So, and sin x is also like that whatever happens here. So, using those things are little bit inside. So, using that we have selected that, but there is nothing like you have to select this actually. Now, you can uh, also select some other thing that you want to, but remember the more and more, more and more known information that you throw into the design and the, the lesser and lesser transient it will have actually. So, that is that is usually my recommendation whatever the you analyze a problem very well and whatever is a known information you want to pump into that actually ok that way you will not land up with any other problem. This is also remember there is an add and subtract term here because this problem is not square remember that the number of states are different from number of control. So, that is in that sense we require psi of x times u s that is the control that we discussed some time back. In this particular problem we have selected simply a constant matrix ok. So, that will make uh, the problem square actually. So, with those results are something like that uh, and uh, this is what you see is something like uh, this uh, dotted lines and all are what you really require for x 1 and x 2, but if you simply apply nominal control then it will not going to happen like that. And remember when you are talking about nominal control apl application here it is the, the nominal control formula as evaluated by the actual state ok. It is not just the nominal control u d is not a function of x d anymore, it is the same function, but instead of x d x will go there because that will make the system dynamics operate in a feedback loop sort of thing. If u d is a purely a function of x d then it is an open loop control actually. So, we do not want to evaluate with that, we want to evaluate with a closed loop control. So, that means uh, nominal control formula as evaluated by actual state actually ok. So, that is what you test the system and really good. By the way if you simply use u d as a function of x d uh, this dynamics that you see here really actually goes unstable uh, that is a lot more penalizing actually ok. Anyway, so the thing is it is nowhere close to what we desired. I mean my both magnitude wise, phase wise and all that it is away and all that. So, but if you apply now I mean this adaptive control 
initially there is some sort of a transient behaviors these are not very close it will take some time to adapt both x1 and x2 is even more okay remember x2 is the dynamic level x1 is kinematic level kinematic level smoothness will happen already but x2 is the dynamic the dynamics part of it uh, where uh, parameter inaccuracy and all are directly reflected in in the second and fourth component actually so second and fourth component of the states you will see lot more transient actually okay compared to first and third first is here and third is here they are integrated effects so will not have too much uh, difficulty there actually anyway so the point here is even uh, the, these uh, if you don't apply adaptive control things are not good but if you apply adaptive control uh, very quickly will adapt and uh, later on you will realize that there is uh, almost like uh, no difference of between the actual system behavior to the ideal or nominal system behavior actually okay so that's that's the point actually the control behavior you see that okay the nominal controller and adaptive controller are very different and that is what uh, it is enforcing good behavior actually adaptive control will like and i mean enforce good behavior there how about uh, capturing the d2 and d4 because these are the things that there are unknown functions and all that so they see initially there are lot of transient but afterwards it will try to uh, go along with that as uh, wherever there is a large change of derivative again it will excite some sort of it, some sort of transient dream of that okay with uh, so uh, when if you see this if you amplify this uh, this uh, peak and uh, trough points actually like uh, wherever there is a large change of curvature derivative now it will not be able to follow that because the entire enforcement is based on first order derivative so what you have no theory is all about first order derivatives so when you have second order derivatives being large and second order derivatives are curvatures right so because the curvatures being large you will not be able to do a perfect job it will it will try to immediately adapt again and then try to follow there Okay, so that that is that the, the philosophy there actually. Okay, so that is how it will happen there. Now this is all about what you what is uh, there for the basic part of the design. Now some sort of uh, like further uh, revisions, uh, modifications, all that. Many times I recommend that we implement this in terms of output robustness. We will not worry about the state robustness directly. and if you are little bit clever in the sense of uh, you know the system dynamics very well and if you know the objectives very well things like that this will typically do the job actually okay and uh, what you are doing here is instead of worrying about y should go to y d i mean x should go to x d and all we'll take some sort of a output variable y and make sure that y should go to y d instead and why do you do that we can on two reasons one thing is uh, the the control effectiveness in y should be very high compared to any other i mean suppose you you split that to x actually in terms of let's say y first and then some other things actually here and the control effectiveness in y should be much higher here compared to other things okay so if you go back to the flight dynamics part of it uh, then this y what you are talking about is uh, nothing but the uh, pqr dynamics that means uh, the rotational rate dynamics actually that is where the control effectiveness is higher so if you want to make sure that the, your control is doing a good job in the in the in pqr loop then any other loop that that effect will not be that punishing actually okay. and typically in the outer loop i mean the other part of it uh, the uvw and other things will come there and that is where the guidance correction will also happen so guys that will also happen in a feedback sense actually so and the typical and when you guidance and control when you act together on aerospace vehicle and things like that then things will not be that that bad actually so you adapt your control in innermost loop only and uh, leave out the rest of the inaccuracies to the guidance part of it actually so that way we will be able to handle problems and why it is there because by selecting a subset we will also make sure that y dimension of y is equal to dimension of u that way typically if you see p dot q dot r dot are three variables and three control actions are available to us so we will not be worried about uh, those factors like uh, okay what the add and subtraction difficulties and all will be avoided actually but well, other than that rest of the things are very similar you can consider y a dot is similar k y minus y a this time and y should go to y a to y d and same thing actually y should go to y d first and then that will be enforced like a dynamic inversion idea sort of thing and if is control f fine you will be able to solve it uh, that way if it is not again you turn off and all that and we about the lyapunov equation you define ea is y minus ya and then go through this uh, ideal neural network actual neural network all the exactly same parallel things and then you will be able to tell di is di uh, uh, of x is like this okay then d hat of x is uh, like this remember even though it's a y dynamics the inaccuracy part can be a function of x actually 
Okay, so so the the basis function selection and all should be a function of x rather, not not necessarily only y. You may you may try out that with y only, y y all that. It may or may not work out well actually. Okay. Now aerodynamics is again same, uh, whatever we have discussed before, and then Lyapunov function candidate is uh, is very very similar what you discussed before. Actually, there is I think a small print mistake there. Should be gamma i inverse actually. Okay. All right. So then you uh, you follow this uh, this gamma in okay. This is gamma inverse again. Okay. That term that mistake is has already been corrected. Next line actually. So this is gamma inverse anyway. So so you do the exactly same thing. You start with that and then take derivatives and then uh, the ei dot is something that you have derived here. So put it back uh, back into the equation basically. And then talk about uh, simplification, and then uh, tell okay this is the coefficient, so let me make sure that that is zero, and then we left out with that term, and again this this throws out uh, the same kind of inequality there. So instead of assuring that all my states should behave uh, like a, a desired state and think think like that, like a nominal state, uh, here I am only worried about my my uh, I mean y vector that I am selecting that should go to y d actually. And most of the time, our experience shows that that is actually not a very bad thing to do. We have experimented several problems, and it turns out uh, it, it's a very good thing to do as long as you operate that uh, with a guidance loop. Actually, entire thing has to be operated with a guidance loop in Excel, basically. All right. Uh, so again, you will end up with something like practical stability issue and all that actually. Okay. Now here is a big difference. Uh, when we started uh, developing all that and things like that, uh, there were some objections from reviewers who tell that okay, this uh, entire thing should be is not having a stabilization term actually. I mean, if you see this, uh, uh, let's say go back to this uh, weight update rule. Okay, in general, okay, okay, this weight update rule is something like x dot equal to like uh, some f of u sort of thing. Okay. In other words, w hat dot what you are talking here and right hand side is there is no w, w hat term actually. So, it is uh, it is like uh, I mean the x dot is not a function of x, it is a function of some other variable actually. So, it is st strictly like an enforcing system or uh, strictly like a time varying in uh, that x dot equal to like b u sort of thing that, that way actually. So, we, what happens here is the stability analysis becomes difficult actually. Okay. That means, whether w hat will ever remain stable or not is not guaranteed here. Okay. It, and that essentially excites an issue of this parameter drift in adaptive control. In, in, in adaptive control theory, there is an issue of parameter drift. And w hat is nothing but parameter, because w hat is something that we are actually identifying d hat actually. So, w hat is nothing but the parameter for d hat. And because it is d hat, this is also coming into the actual system dynamics actually, like right? because d hat comes here. So, approximate system dynamic, there is a w hat term here. So, w hat is a parameter and that parameter is adapted and that during the adaptation process that can drift away actually. That means, it can go to infinity sort of thing. So, to avoid that, uh, there is a stabilizing term and one of the ideas are sigma modification term and all that. So, we are uh, kind of told to do that and then we actually went ahead and uh, try to modify the entire derivation based on that. So, let us uh, I will quickly give you some sort of a overview of that and then details we will see that actually. So, what you do here is uh, uh, with sigma modification term all that you are proposing here is we have additional term like this. Okay. So, it is not just this one. Okay gamma e i phi a in p, p is 0 actually, I mean sorry p is p i is 1 here okay, with the assumption that okay, I think we have I written down somewhere actually okay, p i is some I mean this entire exercise we have assumed that all p i's are 1. Because, I mean this is relative weightage again whether you have a p i term here or not and gamma i here then uh, it you have to select both. So, you can select you can fix one as one and select the other one basically. So, that way. So, we selected p i equal to 1 everywhere here. So, with that uh, it is like this term was originally what was there in here okay. and we are in uh, I mean now we are telling that okay, let us say this additional term out here. Remember gamma and sigma both are positive, gamma is anyway positive, sigma is also positive term which is something like a stabilizing factor. 
So, what is happening here? Uh, like so for whatever reason, suppose this term keeps on happening to be larger, larger and all that actually, that means these are ultimately non-zero, like um, because of some control saturation or something happens, then EI is never zero. So, this is a forcing term all the time, W hat, W i hat dot is positive quantity, then if this is happens to be all this always positive quantity, then this is supposed to grow, grow, grow actually. So, in that situation what will happen is, even if you select a very small quantity for sigma, very small number for sigma, then ultimately W hat if it is larger, then it will not uh, enforce it to grow even further, but this term is actually negative quantity, this x dot equal to like minus x sort of thing actually. So, that is actually stabilizing term. So, if you, this happens to be larger and this will, this will give stability to that actually. But none of our experience shows that that is a, that's a great problem, primarily because perhaps that uh, we should have, uh, I mean we have never encountered like control saturation and other issues there actually. So, if your adaptive control is there and control is saturated on the way, then this issue can, I mean can pop up actually. Okay. And if it happens in your problem in whatever, whatever problem you want to experiment, then uh, it is better to have this term actually. And remember, we will uh, in general sigma is very small quantity, something like 10 to the power minus 6, minus 8 like that, that kind of small quantity. Only to assure that this, whenever this quantity grows large, very large, then it will not go to infinity. Okay. So, that is the primary effect, primary reason for that. So, parameter drift will be, issue will be controlled actually because of that. And if it happens to be very small quantity anyway, W hat the, this term is as if it is not there. Okay, so, that way it is not going to perturb us very much actually. But because of this little additional term, you think okay, things that can be much simpler and things I mean they may not require too much of modification all that, which in general not true actually. So, showing that everything will remain stable from Lyapunov theory was a lot of exercise and let us see that way actually. So, we will go back to the Lyapunov function candidate, let us say instead of Li, let us talk about Vi, I mean this is one of the same thing again. So, Vi is something like this with Pi equal to 1. And I will also assume that Ki equal to 1 for simplicity let us say, that Ki, Ka is the gain which goes to x i dot dynamics. Okay, so, that that is a diagonal element. So, all, all diagonal elements let us assume that is 1 actually. So, with that assumption that it turns out to be like that, this is Vi is if it is like this, then Vi dot happens to be like that. And then with this uh, with this equation that we are proposing here, W hat is like this, W hat sorry W i hat dot is like this. So, W i tilde dot is actually what you, I mean we all know that W i tilde is, uh, is W i ideal weight minus W i hat. So, W i that dot is equal this dot minus that dot and this dot is 0 because that is an ideal weight which is constant. So, it is minus W i hat dot and this W i hat uh, dot is available to us already actually, right. So, we substitute this expression here try to simply E i dot is already available to us before, I mean that is the same expression that you have before actually. So, using all that and try to simplify a little bit, it will turn out to be like this actually. Okay. So, now we have to cut up with a term to analyze something what is happening really here. Now, remember this is after uh, putting the, the weight of dead rule and if, if you go back and see that after putting this weight of dead rule in previous case, we are left out with only this. If it is only this, then then analysis was very straightforward actually, if, right. I mean if you, I, I, let me just quickly go to that and that, uh, okay, here. After we put all that, you are left out with only this quantity actually. If it is only this quantity, then analysis was very straightforward. Now, it is not going to be like that. So, we have to carry a lot of analysis to address uh, what is really happening to the extra term, okay. This extra term, where it is going, what is giving us and all that actually. So, let us try to analyze this extra term. So, before doing that, let us analyze only this term, okay, W i tra tilde transpose time W i hat. So, this one I can uh, put it uh, in the 1 by 2 into 2 and all that. And if I do that, this uh, into 2, remember W i hat is again I put the, that expression W minus W i tilde basically, okay, because this is this, uh, I mean W i tilde by definition is w minus w i hat, right. So, if I put w i hat, uh, this one is equal to this uh, other side I am bringing that and all that actually, okay. From using this relationship, I am doing that actually that way. So, now this quantity I will put it inside, okay. Uh, if I put inside, I will left out with 2 times that, 2 times that 
and then I will carry further this exercise instead of uh, writing all that uh, we will this is like a quadratic term already. So, we will not bother about so much on that this is actually a quadratic term w i tilde is the w i tilde is the so this is w i tilde norm sort of thing. So, we'll, but what about this term this is not quadratic term. So, we have to analyze it further on that. So, this term is we will I'll write it as something this one plus this one and then this particular thing we will expand it again okay. and then try to uh, I mean expand the bracket and then simplify as much as possible and we will try we will end up with something like this. Okay. So, sigma times this what you what we are really interested in okay. can be analyzed to be like that and then you can see there will be some sort of a plus minus uh, cancellation quantity and things like that ultimately you can directly come from here to there also. Okay. What is happening here instead of a non quadratic term that we started with okay, this is this is actually a non quadratic term we are writing that as bunch of quadratic terms actually somehow. Okay. So, but the problem here is this is not a, all are not with the same sign there is one two I mean two are positive signs one is negative sign I mean that, that also you need to remember actually. Okay. So, if I select all that I, uh, there and then do that proper algebra and things like that or ultimately I will end up with uh, remember this is minus of the term what you are analyzing this is positive of that term. So, all that thing has to be taken into account while analyzing this this v i dot actually. So, you put that and if there is any algebra mistake out here you can also think of doing that exercise yourself and correct it out. And then uh, I, mean, I mean what it mess message here is this entire quantity that we are bothered about uh, in the, uh, in this part of it actually okay, turns out to be something like this okay. and th this particular quantity is actually less than equal to this quantity now. I mean we if I talk about all norms and all that actually see, see quadratic quantities I will put that in, in one sort of a norm quantity and tell okay, this is what it should be actually. And uh, all this exercise by the way it is all given uh, like I, this is the paper that I am talking here which is like uh, appeared in this journal and all uh, 2007. So, all these things are also available here actually. Okay. So, uh, let me go there quickly this uh, this entire exercise is what I am talking actually okay. all that things are available. So, if you I mean only mistake probably is something like uh, this should be w tilde dot sort of thing it is not w head dot okay, so that way all other things are there. So, if you anybody wants to like read this you can read this uh, paper actually all right. So, we are uh, left out with something like this quantity and this quantity once you start putting everything everywhere. So, earlier we we had only only this quantity okay. now we will have this quantity okay. earlier we had only this quantity now we will have all this additional quantity actually, okay. but these quantities can be combined together and things like that. Okay. So, once you combine them then it turns out that okay, I will be able to combine it let us say something like this actually. Okay. So, what, I, what is happening here? So, this this v i dot is supposed to be like let me define this quantity as beta i sort of thing now okay. and with that definition of beta i we have v i dot is negative whenever this because we are left out with this negative quantity with this beta i term actually. Okay. So, that means, this beta i negative whenever this is greater than equal to beta i whenever strictly greater than beta i this is strictly less than 0. So, v i dot is strictly less than 0 whenever this is this condition is satisfied. So, again we left out with a with a meaningful condition where this we talk about norm of uh, this error quantity absolute value I mean scalar value. So, it is absolute norm of error quantity is greater than this particular quantity and this quantity is also given as something like this and remember this w what you are talking here w is actually in general this is w remember w tilde is w minus w hat. So, w is equal to w tilde plus w hat. So, vectorially speaking if you have w is like this so then this is w hat let us say and w tilde let us say. So, what you are telling is this uh, in this uh, length uh, norm that means norm is a vector quantity anyway. So, this norm minus this norm minus that norm. So, it is a very small quantity the beta the definition of beta actually epsilon is anyway a small quantity because ideal error function approximation error. So, this is a small quantity and this as long as this error norm is greater than this small quantity then v i dot is negative actually. So, that is how it operates actually. 
So, with that modification it was uh, kind of complete and uh, so summary part of it uh, in the entire design. It is a generic design with uh, adopt, I mean robustifying it is capable of robustifying any nominal control is valid for both non square and non affine problems in general. And uh, we have done other uh, modification what is the kind of like structured neuro adaptive design for better efficient learning where kinematics and dynamics part are dealt separately. References largely I have taken from the first reference, but other references are also available. So, with that I will stop. Thank you.